Hello, this is a quick tutorial on using the debug features within Skype as well as um, an auto hotkey using this output debug, which I recently learned about. And um, the, the post I saw on the forum, while it sounded really interesting, I had a hard time understanding what to do, so I thought a video would be a lot easier way to convey this. So first off, so I have a basic script here. Um, before I launch it, I want to kind of give a quick outline of it. Um, so I just declare a variable equals zero. And then um, this first line I put in, so everything after this, you'll see line, and then it has the line number, and then um, A and X right now, it's nothing because it's not in the loop. Um, and actually, sorry, this is the <laughs> variable here, this is just the text. And then the var is going to say zero. Um, and then we jump into a looper, um, a subroutine, so I called it looper just to help distinguish it. So we jump down here, we go through this route, and then there I have a sub loop, which actually leaves this one and goes to here. And in in the loop, you'll see why I think it's helpful to, to show it this way. All right, so um, hopefully you, you do use Skype. Um, I know there's a lot of other ones and benefits to the different types of editors, but Skype with Auto Hotkey, it's, it's an awesome um, tool that allows you to do a lot of stuff. One of the things which I just recently learned about was the debugging feature, which is pretty awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, launch this which kicks it off into the debugging mode. And then I can press this button here, or actually I'm going to hit F10 so I don't get off of it. And what it'll do is it'll start going line by line, right? So I hit there, nothing really happens. Right here, we're at, F, we're at row 10 now. Right now, you're not seeing any extra output because this is the first line. So when I call this, you'll see this output um, stream viewer output window open up. And it's, it's displaying, as I mentioned, so this, I don't know what the S-T-D-E-R-R, -R, standard error maybe or something, but um, it says line 5, right, because this was in line 5 when the when the thing was called. A index is 0, and as I said, this is, um, so A index is, and right now, we're not inside the loop, so it's 0. And the var is 0 because we declared it as 0 up here. And so I'm going to hit the next button. Now that, notice it went from up here down to here and jumped into the loop, which is going to loop 15 times. Um, and let's continue on. Let me hit, keep hitting F10 here. Alright, so now when we call this again, right now it ran that line, and so it tells me at line 15, this is what's helpful also for if you're dynamically doing something, you can see what line, you know, I like having that line number in there, so I know if I have a variable um, being adjusted or changed several times, I can tell specifically what line I was on when it happened, right? If you're using message box and stuff, you're not going to know, you're going to have to know where you are in the program, and it just can be tricky. So this is very helpful. Um, then it gives me the A index is 1 and VAR is 1. So it's giving me some of the key variables for my program um, that I need. And, and now notice, so before actually um, I go in there, what I want to show is there's two other things here. There's the call stack. In the call stack, um, I should have showed you before we got into this loop, but my understanding, I'm not a programmer, but the, uh, my understanding of the call stack is it tells you, basically helps you understand where you are in your program and where it was coming from. So before, when I first started, um, it was just this auto-execute, and then when we got into the looper, it added this, and now why I stopped here, when I hit F10 again, it's going to go sub into the sub-looper, and you'll see that now we're in the sub-looper, and what the way I interpret this is like I'm at line 23, it's going to go through this a couple times, and then when it, it's going to kick back into this one, and you'll see the sublooper goes back, and it'll go back to looper, and then eventually when that's done the 15 times, it'll jump back up to this message box and be out of it. Uh, but that's a handy thing to see where you are in your subroutines in um, the flow of what you're doing. And the other one I wanted to show was um, this is the variable list which can be helpful. The other thing you can do, which I haven't fully explored yet, but you can double click on it and tell it to update it or something and see, I think, if it's changed, but I'm not quite too clear on that. But you can see some of your key variables there, and I believe this stays active as long as you're going. So, um, let's get back into this. I'm going to hit F10 again, and now it's going to go through this three times. And what you'll see is this next one, right, now that we're in the subroutine, it's at line 26, Right, A index is 1, var is 11, and sublooper in A index is 1. And so it'll do this three times. 2, 3, and now, as again, it's, once we get out of this sublooper, it's going to return. So now we're back into looper, and I know we're going through here, and it'll go through 14 more times. Uh, but what, so the next one I'm going to use is 
this button I think is pretty awesome. It'll run through until it's ready to exit that um, function or label. And since we're in this um, loop, it's going to go through. Actually, I'm going to do it down here in the next one. So let me get to there. So now we're in here. Now when I hit this button, otherwise I'd have to click this three times, right? Or what if it was 30? It'd take me quite a while. I can click this, and what it's going to do is it's going to go through this until it exits and returns back to the top one. Right, so that just, it ran through it. You see here's the one, two, three, but it jumped me back up here. But it's still very easy to see what's going on um, with my program. And, and again, when you're debugging and trying to figure out what where the problem is, it can be um, <laughs> quite a heartache if you're using message boxes and list fars, uh, trying to pause it at the right time. And I just thought, man, I, I didn't realize that Skype allowed you to do this too. Um, show you this dynamically as it's running. Uh, there is some sort of a limit so it doesn't keep doing it. Um, I'm sorry, it starts replacing it. So if I keep going through this, you'll see I lose the top end. Um, and I don't think that's actually, I'm not sure if that's stored anywhere or not. But still, for a quick fix, if you can have this code somewhere available and insert it into your program, um, and obviously when I say that, I say, I mean this, because this is going to differ on depending on what your program is. But it's a very quick and easy way to check out your program and see what the values are, when things are being called, and where they are, uh, more importantly, often, at least from my experience. Thanks.